Hello guys, it's Mashtag here. Today I want to talk about a very different retro gaming handheld, the Analog Pocket. In first place, it's a retro gaming handheld for Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, but with an additional adapter it's even possible to run more retro gaming handheld systems like Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color, as well as Atari Lynx and more. Compared to all other retro gaming handhelds you might have known before, this system uses no software emulation but replicates the real hardware of these systems. Instead of emulating a retro system, the Analog Pocket runs the original hardware by an internal FPGA, a field programmable gate array. In simple words, a FPGA works like a building set of hardware components that can be composed together by software to work like the real piece of hardware. Like that, it is possible to run the original games like they did on the real handheld or console system. Analog did not just apply their concept for this Game Boy system, but also for a Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis version. But in this video, I like to focus on the Analog Pocket. Let's take a sneak look together. Enjoy! Let's first take a look at the technical specs of the Analog Pocket to satisfy the nerds out there. The Pocket's dimensions are 5.86 inch in height, 3.46 inch in width and 0.86 inch in thickness, what makes it almost the same size as the original Game Boy. But compared to the original Game Boy, the Pocket is about 34% thinner and even thinner than a Game Boy Pocket. As mentioned before, the device is powered by two FPGAs. While the first and more powerful FPGA is responsible to represent the system hardware to emulate, the second FPGA was added as a playground for FPGA developers. To develop new FPGA cores, for example. The 4300mAh battery takes 4 to 5 hours for a full charge and lasts for around 6 to 10 hours of playtime. The long charge time, compared to the play time, can be lowered using a fast charge adapter. The fast charge adapter is not part of the basic bundle and needs to be purchased separately. The device actually gets charged by the bottom side USB-C port. The original style link port allows to sync two pockets via nano loop, play multiplayer games like Tetris or trade Pokemons. I'm not sure if the link connection also works between an original Game Boy and the analog pocket, but if I ever get my hands on this device, I will test this for sure. The microSD card slot can be used to install firmware updates to Analog's own made Analog OS firmware. Against some expectations, the slot can't be used to play ROM files on this device. Analog has a strict policy against ROM piracy. But let's wait and see if this restriction might get bypassed in the future with some custom firmware. Compared to the original Game Boy, the Pocket comes along with stereo speakers. Additionally, you have the option to connect your headphones using the 3.5mm audio jack. All buttons of the analog pockets are free to configure and can be mapped to your own preferences per system. The analog pocket is available in two different colors classic black and classic white. This amplifies the minimalistic design of this handheld, what I personally prefer very much. But for now, let's talk about one of the highlights of this handheld, the screen. The Pocket has a 3.5 inch LC display with a resolution of 1600 x 1440, what equals 10 times the resolution of the original Game Boy and leads to a pixel density of 650 ppi, so you can expect very clear image reproduction. The screen itself is protected by Gorilla Glass. Let's take a closer look to some features of the Analog Pocket. The basic system is compatible with your original Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance game cartridges, but can also be extended to further systems using special cartridge adapters. 
These adapters allow you to additionally play original Sega Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket slash Color and Atari Lynx game cartridges with this device. With a further adapter it should also be possible to play TurboGrafx-16 games. The Analog OS firmware organizes your games in game lists with game thumbnails, supports functions like a sleep mode, save and load of game states or adapt video settings for the supported systems. External controllers can be connected to the device and set up via a special menu entry. With an additional dock you can connect the analog pocket to an external monitor or TV via HDMI and play your games on a big screen. One feature I'm absolutely not familiar with is the possibility to use the device as a digital audio workstation for MIDI music. You can use the Pocket as a mobile synthesizer and compose music on the device itself. After your songs are finished, you can connect the Pocket to your PC or Mac to save it or connect it to a compatible keyboard as music input. So why is a FPGA such a good choice over the ordinary software emulation? The actual gaming handheld and console systems are real hardware devices that follow a fixed logic by each chip or circuit on the mainboard. The FPGA technology allows to represent these hardware components within a FPGA core that can be loaded as a hardware configuration. Like that, the cartridge gets played exactly like it was originally designed. This leads to 100% accuracy of the game's look and feel. There's no input lag by any required software calculation while playing, so it feels closest to the original gameplay experience. With different FPGA cores, it's possible to turn such a FPGA-based system into another different gaming console or handheld. Another project that follows the same exact concept is called Mister. It's an FPGA-based system that allows to represent different gaming systems by using associated FPGA cores. If you're interested in this one, I'll leave you a link in the video description. Finally, let's talk about the pros and cons of this emulation handheld. The main benefit of such a FPGA-based handheld or console is the accuracy of emulation. No software emulated system will give you this 100% gameplay experience back. Not just the original gameplay feeling, but also the attention for detail of the video representation is special for the analog pocket. A lot of effort was applied to represent each supported handheld system as much as possible. Thanks to the high resolution display, multiple pixel on the panel can be used to represent one original pixel in the game. The built-in link cable support might be a game-changing feature for those of you who still like to play and trade Pokemon or have a Tetris multiplayer session with friends. Link cable support has always been a challenge for software emulation and is not available for many emulators. Beside the original Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear and all other supported systems, this is the only alternative to play your original game cartridges. Since the original handhelds are no longer produced, the only chance to play your games is to buy a used system or grab a device like the Analog Pocket. Analog announced free updates for the OS running on the Analog Pocket, so we can expect further feature updates in the future and maybe even more supported systems. Not a big benefit, but worth to mention is the Nano Loop Synthesizer feature to compose own music and the direct support for GB Studio to test and play self-created Game Boy games on this device. Now let's talk about the cons. The Analog Pocket still doesn't support as many handhelds or console systems as ordinary software-based emulation systems do. But as I mentioned, let's wait and see if the FPGA developers can catch up here in future with further cores to support more systems. Since the device doesn't support to play ROMs, you really need to own each and every single game as a working cartridge. Even if you backed up your personal cartridge game as a ROM, in case it gets broken, you will not be able to play it with this device. Compared to the ordinary software-based emulation systems, the Pocket is quite expensive. 
with a price tag of $219 for a basic set, this is definitely not a cheap handheld. For less than half the price, you get a decent handheld from Inburnic or Retroid that can emulate even more systems than the Pocket does. The prices for electronic devices are in general a bit higher at the moment, since the chip market still is in a worldwide chip shortage. So let's see if it drops as the situation gets more relaxed again. By the way, this is the main reason why many people that order the analog pocket have to wait for several months to get their device. At the end, I'd like to mention not to forget that this way of emulation is still new compared to software emulation and needs some more time to develop. But from my point of view, it has a very high potential. In my opinion, this seems like the best way to emulate a retro gaming system and the reason why I make this video and share it with you guys. What are your thoughts about FPGA based emulation? Is the extra money worth the accuracy or would you rather go with an ordinary software emulation based system? Let me know in the comments below, I'd really be interested in your opinions and would love to join the discussion here. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, let me know with a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for more information in future. Bye!